Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to go through a practice problem which is about perfect or first degree price discrimination when we sell a bundle. And this is actually part of a larger question about perfect price discrimination more generally, so we're at part C now. I'll link to parts A and B in the description below just in case you're interested. I also have a video on the theory behind price discrimination and perfect price discrimination uh, in case you're interested. So all, all of those links to those related videos are in the description. All right, in this question, we're told that a firm faces a demand curve described by the equation QD is equal to 100 minus P over two. And here QD is equal to the quantity demanded and P is equal to the price. The marginal cost of production is constant and equal to 20 and there are no fixed costs of production. So we're asked in the question, assuming that the demand curve described is for one individual, what would be the market outcome if the firm perfectly price discriminated by selling a bundle? Find producer surplus, that's PS, consumer surplus, that's CS, and any deadweight loss, that's DWL. So just to start with our question here, we're just first going to draw the demand and our marginal cost curve here. So I have that here. And in the first part of the video, I'll just go through how I got to this diagram. And feel free to skip this part. The chapters are in the description, especially if you've come from one of the other videos in this question, or if you're just really comfortable with drawing demand and marginal cost. If you're still with me, in order to find our quantity axis intercept here, I've set price, that's P equal to zero in our demand equation. So I get QD is equal to 100 minus zero on two. So that's just equal to 100. That's the quantity axis intercept for our demand curve. In order to find the price axis intercept, I set QD is equal to zero in our demand equation. So I get zero is equal to 100 minus P on two. I'm then going to solve for P. So I first can add P on two to both sides and we get P on two is equal to 100. I can then just easily multiply both sides by two and I get P is equal to 200. That's our price axis intercept. To draw the demand curve, I just link those two points together. Our demand also tracks willingness to pay, that's WTP and the marginal benefit of consumption, that's MB, so I've labeled that there as well. I've also put in our marginal cost curve, which is constant, so it's just going to be a horizontal line at that level of 20. Now, when we perfectly price discriminate, the firm is going to produce right up to the intersection of marginal cost and demand, and that's where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. This is the efficient level of production. It exhausts all possible trades. Now to find the quantity associated with this point, I first need to work with my demand curve a bit and just make price the subject before I set it equal to marginal cost to find that intersection point. So I take my demand equation and I'm first just going to take 100 away from both sides. So I get QD minus 100 is equal to negative P on two. Then I multiply both sides by negative two and I get P is equal to negative two QD plus 200. And just rearranging to make it neat, I get P is equal to 200 minus two times QD. So now we can set demand described in this way. This is actually just an inverse demand equation equal to marginal cost. So I get 200 minus two QD is equal to 20. I'll just solve for quantity, so I'll take 200 away from both sides first, and I get negative 2QD is equal to negative 180. Divide both sides by negative 2, and I get QD is equal to 90. So that's the quantity associated with the intersection of demand and marginal cost. So I can put that on our diagram here, that's Q star. That's going to be how much our firm will produce, so firm output when they perfectly price discriminate. And actually, if we perfectly price discriminate by bundling, what the firm will do is just sell one bundle of these 90 units and we price that bundle at the total willingness to pay of the consumer for those 90 units. I should say here that bundling can also describe 
second degree price discrimination, but this is not what we're discussing here. I'll link to other videos below that discusses second degree and, and how we can distinguish between the different types of price discrimination. But here we're selling right up to the efficient amount. There won't be any dead weight loss. Uh, there won't be any consumer surplus. So this is the firm perfectly price discriminating. So back to our bundle of 90 units then. We can find the total willingness to pay for these 90 units by taking the area underneath demand, which tracks the willingness to pay for each marginal unit, all the way up to the quantity equal to 90. So this is going to be the area here that I have in green. This area sums up the highest willingness to pay for each of these 90 units that we're going to have in our bundle. In order to find the value of this area, I can divide the whole area into two shapes, a rectangle and a triangle. Now to find the area of the rectangle, we just use base times height. 90 will be our base and the height will be 20. So this area will be equal to 1,800. The area of the triangle will be half times base times height. The base will be 90. The height will actually be, well, the price axis intercept, that's 200 minus the bottom or the level of the bottom of the triangle, so 20. So that height is 200 minus 20, so 180. 90 times 180 times a half is equal to 8,100. So that's the area of the triangle. The whole area then is 1,800 plus 8,100. So 9,900, that's going to be our price for the bundle, uh, 9,900. And that's also equal to the total maximum willingness to pay for that bundle of 90 units that we're selling to the consumer. If we want to think about profit, we just take the difference between total revenue, that's TR and total cost TC. Now this green area here will actually be the total revenue for the firm. We're selling one bundle at 9,900. So that's total revenue. Our total cost, assuming no fixed cost, and that's fine, we can assume that that's indicated in the question that there are no fixed costs, will just be the sum of the marginal costs of production. Well, we produce and sell 90 units and the marginal cost of each of those units is 20. So total cost then will be 20 times 90, 1,800. And that's the purple area here. Taking the difference between total revenue and total cost, we find that profit is equal to 9,900 minus 1,800, so 8,100. Graphically, that's the orange area here, the difference between the green total revenue area and the purple total cost area. In terms of welfare, there will be no consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is just the sum of the willingness to pay minus the price for each unit traded. But in this market, we've taken that whole area of willingness to pay and that's been the price. So there's never any difference between the willingness to pay and the price. So there's no consumer surplus. Producer surplus will be equal to 8,100 in this case. And this is the same amount as the profit. And that's to be expected when there are no fixed costs, profit is equal to producer surplus. Now, typically we think about producer surplus as being equal to the sum of price minus marginal cost, and we sum up over all units traded. In this case, we can just think about that in terms of, well, the price for one of these bundles is 9,900 and the marginal cost for that one bundle, if that makes sense, is 1,800. That's the, that's the cost of making that bundle. Uh, so the difference between them is producer surplus is 8,100. And, and that's just that pink area that I've indicated on the screen there. Now this is the only surplus in the market. So producer surplus is equal to total surplus. Uh, and there's no dead weight loss because we're producing that efficient amount where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. And so that's our question. If you do have a look at parts A and B, you'll see that we get these same outcomes in those other ways of perfectly price discriminating. So when we charge prices equal to willingness to pay, uh, or if we impose a two part tariff, uh, it's all first degree price discrimination, we get these same outcomes in terms of profit and welfare. So I hope the video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Hope you guys are keeping safe and happy.